This video is brought to you by our amazing supporters over at Patreon. Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and in this video we're going to be taking our player settings menu and making it actually functional by being able to adjust these values in these sliders here and be able to save those uh, when we click the save button. So first thing to do, a little bit of housekeeping. I realized I left in our settings menu scene, I did not rename our actual UI canvas here. So I'm going to quickly double click that and change this to be settings menu UI. And then we need to create um, a couple new folders in our project here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into our um, scripts folder and create a new folder in here called settings menu. I'm going to open this up and then inside of here, I'm gonna create a script called settings menu UI. And this is going to do largely what our main menu UI did on our main menu canvas, but this one we're going to apply to our settings menu canvas. So I'm simply going to drag that now onto the components here, and that appears there. Right now there's nothing in it, so it's not going to do anything for us though. So with those in place, what I'm actually going to open up first is our save manager, and that's because if we go back to our scripts and to our save manager, what we have right now is a setup where we can save the furthest level by hitting save or loading that furthest level, but we don't really have any way of dynamically saying, you know, oh, we want to save this particular setting. So I'm going to create a new, um, new method here that's going to let us kind of say which specific setting we're saving and supply that value. So we're going to do that in here by creating a public static void method. And this is going to be called save setting. And in here, it's going to take a string, which we'll call label, and a float called value. And all we need to do inside of this is much in the way that here we were setting our integer um, using a specifically named string and pulling a specific value. Instead, here we're going to use the parameters. So we're going to say player press dot set float because we're going to be working with floats here, and then we're going to simply pass in label and value. Likewise, it's pretty easy for us to get the value as well. We can do that by saying public static float, because we're going to return a float here. We're going to get that out of this save manager. And all we need to do is say load setting. And we simply need to pass in the string this time, the label, because we're going to be getting the value from that. And here we can simply say return player prefs dot get float and pass in that label. And so with these couple of quick methods here, we're going to be able to much quicker use our um, settings menu UI to pull in the dynamic information that we need. In fact, let's jump back here now, go into our settings menu, and open up our settings menu UI script. Inside of here, what we can do is we can actually get rid of our um, start and update. We're not going to need either of those. However, we are going to need a couple of things. We're going to need using unityengine.ui, and we're going to need references to our sliders so that we can use them dynamically. So we're going to say public slider. We're actually going to put two um, separate variables on one line here. I'm going to say music and SFX for sound effects. In addition to these, we're I'm also going to create a couple of strings that we can use so that we're not ever worrying about accidentally putting the wrong label in here or creating a new um, setting or trying to get a setting that doesn't exist. I'm going to create two strings. This one, first one's going to be called string music pref. It's going to be equal to music and a string called sfx pref, and that's going to be equal to SFX in quotes. So we're now we can use these variables and we'll know that we are always spelling that properly and using the exact same string every time. So the first thing we're going to do here is we, we are actually going to use a start method. But what the start method is going to do for us is it's simply going to make sure that our sliders here are pulling up the appropriate values. If we've previously set some values for the audio, we want to make sure that we're reflecting that. We don't want to always start at 100%. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to have each of our sliders 
take a look into player prefs and see, hey, what's the value of these two settings? So we can start with our music slider. And how we'll do this is we'll set our sliders value. So music.value equal to our save manager dot load setting. And we're simply going to load music pref. Now there's a little bit of a gotcha here, which is that when we first when we first start our game, there are no settings for our music or our sound effects. And so what player prefs is going to return for us is the default value, in this case of a float, which is zero. So what this would actually do is this would, when the first time you play the game, the first time you go into settings, you would get your music value on the slider as zero, which is a little bit weird. You generally don't see, usually you'll see music and audio at 100%, maybe like around 80%, somewhere around there, but not zero. So we're going to do a quick little fix for this, and that's going to be to say 1f minus. So it's going to invert the values. So what this means is that we're starting out at a default of 1 because we're subtracting 0 from it. And now we just need to make sure that when we save our values, we also invert it this way. And so what happens is it always reflects that inverted value, um, which will give us the value that we, um, the proper value that we want. So for s of x value, it'll be the same thing. We'll say s of x equals 1f minus save manager dot load setting. And instead we'll pull our sound effects pref string. Next thing we want to do is we want to actually save, be able to save our settings. This we're going to make a public void called save settings. And that's public so that we can attach it to the button that we have. And in here, what we're going to do is we're going to simply tell our save manager to pull the values from the um, sliders, invert them, and then save them to player prefs for us. So we'll say uh, save manager dot save setting, and we'll start with the music value again. So we'll pass in the music pref label, and then we'll do 1f minus music dot value. And it'll be the same thing for our sound effects, just with the sound effects label and our sound effects slider. Finally, we're going to want to be able to actually return to the main menu once we save this. And we're actually going to do this in a separate method because we also going to want to use that for our cancel. If we cancel out and don't save anything, we want to just jump back to the main menu. So how we'll do that down here is we'll say public void return to main menu. And then we'll simply call our scene loader dot load scene and pass in the main menu enum. With this in place, now we can simply call this exact same method right up here. And so now we'll either save and return to the main menu or simply return to the main menu depending on which button we hit. So these should all be working now. We just have to make sure that we hook everything up properly inside of Unity. So let's jump back over to Unity, go to our canvas here, and we see we have our music and SFX sliders. So let's jump into the containers where those both are. And right now these all have the same names because we didn't really um, differentiate them. So I am going to quickly change this to music slider and this to oops, SFX slider. And that way we just know that we have that. Uh, we're putting the right one in the right spot. I'm going to drag music slider over to music slider and FX, SFX to the SFX variable here. And with those in place, you're actually in good, pretty good shape right now. The only other thing we need to make sure we do is go to our save button. We're going to add an on click event here. We're going to drag our canvas, which holds the UI script. And we're going to go down to settings menu UI. And we're going to choose save settings here. And we'll do the same for our cancel button. Add a new function to call drag in our canvas, and this time we'll just go to simply to return to main menu. We'll skip saving it. So if we make any changes, those get scrapped, and we just go back to the main menu. So I'm going to save this now, and if we hit play, what we should see, first off, is that both of these jump up to 100%, because right now we don't have any um, settings saved, but what's happening is we're doing one minus, so we do have these both at 100% where we want them. Now I can drag this down, say around 50%, save it, we jump back to the main menu, but if I go back to settings, 
we see that that is still at what we put it at. I could even put this lower, this lower here still, save that, jump back to settings, and we see that those retain their positions. If I even, in fact, if I kind of switch these around, save, quit out of the game, start it up anew, we see it's those switched values still. It's always retaining that information for us now. The only thing that isn't happening is that our two labels here, which for the values, aren't actually reflecting what we've put. And you don't necessarily, these are kind of a nice to have. You're obviously getting sort of the idea of what the value is based on this, but if you wanted a more precise value for some reason, it's pretty easy to make these reflect um, the values on the sliders. So let's do that right now. I'm gonna create another c -sharp script in our settings menu folder. And we're gonna call this settings value. I'm going to open this up in Mono Develop, and once again we're going to use using Unity Engine UI, and I'm also going to require a component on this. We're going to require component type of text because we want this to basically share an object that has a text component, and it will automatically tell the text to update itself um, when the slider gets updated. So we're going to put in a text variable here and I'm going to call this value text and instead of void start I'm going to use void awake and when we awake we're going to first thing we're going to do is we're going to set value text equal to get component text. We can actually get rid of update we're not going to do anything uh, frame by frame here however we're going to add a new public void called update value and this is going to take a float f. And simply what we're going to do is here, we're going to say that value text dot text, so that's the actual kind of text um, field of the value component, is going to be equal to, we're going to say that float f times 100, so that we're taking it from a value between 0 and 1 and turning it into a percentage, dot to string, then I'm going to pass in a format here. You'll see there's a ton of different ones, but I'm going to use F0, which is a fixed point zero, which will give us um, the value without any decimal points after it. And then I'm going to add to that, after that, just a percent sign. Oops, we don't need that last parenthesis. Uh, you can just do it right to the semicolon. So this will, whenever we call this update value, it will take whatever f is and turn it into, into a percentage for us, and then represent that in our text component. Now you'll notice in here though, we don't have any reference to the slider itself, and that's because we're going to use one of Unity's kind of events and dynamic ways of doing this. We're going to go first to our music container here, go to the value there. I'm gonna add this settings value component, and I'm actually going to rename this to music value once again so that we make sure that we're using the proper one. So now if I go back to the slider, you'll notice there's this on value changed event. So whenever this value gets changed, whether that's being done through code or manually, this whatever's in here will get called. So we're going to add a new method there. We're going to drag in our music value. And we can pull settings value and you'll notice you have static parameters here and we could choose update value here the problem is then we'd have to set a specific float value and we don't want to do that we want it to reflect again the value of the slider but you'll notice up at the top we have dynamic float update value and that's going to take the float that is the slider value and use that as the parameter for us which is exactly what we want so we'll do that again with the fs um, sound effects container Go to here, I'm going to rename this to SFX value. I'm going to add the settings value component, and then we'll go back to the slider, add a function, pass in the value as the object, and call the dynamic update value. Now we can save that and hit play, and what we'll see is not only do these load, but they actually show the precise uh, percentage value, and if we change this, it kind of automatically changes dynamically for us now to exactly um, what the slider values are at. And we can still save and reload as normal. Also worth noting, if I bring these all the way back up, but hit cancel, 
go to settings, it doesn't save those. It doesn't um, change them at all. So that basically covers how you can get your settings um, to save based on what you're using with UI elements, um, taking what's a value on a slider and both representing it in text and saving it to player prefs when you choose to do so. Um, next video, we're gonna actually cover how this can actually impact your game by creating a um, system that actually uses these values from player prefs and represents them in your game. In the meantime, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.